will officially call the meeting to order. If you'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everyone. Has everyone had a chance to review the agenda? And are there any that we questions? Oh. Oh. I make a motion that we accept the agenda. I'll second. We have a motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Is there anybody that's going to want to make any public comments? You're shaking your head before I finish the question. <laughs> okay, I won't, I won't read the disclaimer then. We'll move on. Uh, consent agenda, any questions? I've got a couple if no one else does. The Iowa Elks request, when are they holding that? I didn't see a date. September 16th. Uh, Is it September? It should be Second. September 16th. Seems like I had to call the community building. It was September something, and you're probably right, Nick. I think it is the 16th. Yeah, 15th and 16th. 15th, 16th. They're going to set up on the Friday the 15th and have it on the 16th on Saturday. Okay. And then I want to point out that the request made by the VFW La Harp, that is May 2024. Um, do you guys have, is that electronically in a calendar so that nobody calls us and we accidentally approve a second event that day at the same corner? I can put it on our calendar yeah. to where it, okay. at least we'll see it. I'll probably put it on our agenda form. And then maybe remind us as it gets closer so right. that if anybody has any questions about it. Um, the only other question I have I'd like to ask in our appropriations. Um, Page three, the mowing contract. I'm noticing a lot of rounded off one hours. Is is that specifically in the contract? Because some of these lots and some of these houses are pretty small. So are they allowed to do a minimum one hour on the lot? I think that's correct. Yeah. I'd have to look at the contract. Okay. Yeah. If, yeah. We, if it's not. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we don't do it by the by increments. It's by the hour. So if it's a 15-minute mow, they, they bump up to an hour? Okay. Yeah. Anybody else questions about the appropriations? Can we have a motion? Um, I'll second. second. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? New business, the public hearing for the revenue neutral Okay, I'm assuming rate. everyone got your notice from the county in the mail. Um, we just need to set the public hearing to hold the revenue neutral rate hearing and also the hearing for the 2024 budget. What you have in your packet is what will be published. So when it comes to our public hearing, we'll hold the public hearings and we will not, the council cannot increase the budget from what's published unless we hold a separate hearing. So what we're publishing is what's in front of you, and that will be the the highest without another hearing. And so you need two separate motions? Yes. Tonight? Yeah. Yes. Any questions, council? Ready to make a motion? I'll move to set a public hearing for the proposed revenue neutral rate for the 2024 budget at the City Council meeting on Monday, August 24, 2023 at 6 p.m. at the Riverside Park Community Building. What date did you say? Yeah. August 22nd, er, 28. 28th. 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 Yes. Yep. I probably said 22nd. Okay, we have a motion. I'll second. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Do we have a uh, motion for the uh, annual budget hearing? I'll make a motion to set the public hearing for the proposed 2024 budget. On Monday, August 28, 2023 at 6 p.m. Second. Second. Is that you, Nick? Yes. Motion second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
Thank you. Jim, is this yours? Uh, the council had approved that I could go out for bid because it's taking so long to get truck. The lead times are out. So I went out to four companies. Three of them came back, and then we had one find it on the website. <clears throat> As you guys probably see in your packet, uh, the Terex unit was just unbelievable price. I, I kind of figured they'd be more in the game. And the race truck, which is a low one, that was a truck that a custom truck company was working with another company out of Illinois, and they was building a demo truck. And they just saw it on the website and bid on it. So it really don't match any of the specs. So then it came down to be the ABM, which is a VersaLift, and a Altec. And as you can see, there's about $5,000 worth of difference. The biggest thing is the lead time. Altec's a little longer than the VersaLift. But VersaLift, sometimes they'll do that. And then after they don't hit the date, they'll ask for an extra three months or so. So uh, we've had very good luck with the Altec. Um, I guess I can say their road service is really good. And that's the only thing. With the VersaLift, we don't have any. They don't have a lot of road service in Kansas, but they did say they could get here. So I would I would present the Altec and leave it up to you on that. When you when you say service, they could get here. What does that imply? From, well, they're mainly, from Minnesota? Well, they're, Minnesota, Iowa, and South Dakota is their real big area. So, yeah, they're trying to reach so out. what they're to trying to do. Travel from a distance. Yeah, it causes them more travel time. And Alltech, they're out of St. Joseph, Saint so is that where their they, yes, service they, runs from? Yes, and they do from? have a service truck. So uh, they can be here in the day, the day of. Yep. Well, yeah. sometimes it has a day, day of, to, week of, you know, and, and then if they got to get parts or something, but usually it's something along that line. All our bucket trucks are currently. Yeah, pr currently I'm running all out tech. Quick question. question on my part. Um, the rush truck centers, it says that the uh, minimum specifications weren't met because of the bucket. Is that something that we can swap from a vehicle that we have to the vehicle that? No, sir. Okay. The, uh, there are the the bucket truck needed the body where they was going to put on was a fiberglass body that didn't meet it and then the company they're using for the bucket and boom would not fit with Altex. okay and jim aren't your uh, lift trucks they're they're under scrutiny and aren't they required to be inspected so often yes i have to have them dielectric checks once a year stress tested once a year so that's and a factor to consider too nick yeah. is the the actual wear on those things may not May have already exceeded. Our truck will be lifetime. 20 years old in the 20 in 2024, and like I say, you're looking at 25 into 25, 26 before we'll even receive the other truck. Any further questions? Do we have anyone willing to make a? I make a motion to accept the bid from Altec Industries of St. Joseph's, Missouri, in the amount of 296745 and authorize staff to execute the necessary documents for the purchase. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Mark and Abbott. We had two at the same Mark time. And <laughs> Mark and Abbott. Motion and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Thank, Thank you, you, Jim, for your time. Prairie land, it's your time up. <clears throat> and I might remind you gentlemen that uh, this is televised, so we ask that you get as close to the mic as you can so people watching can hear us. Well, good evening, council members. Thank you for some time on the agenda this evening. My name is Drew Durst with Prairie Land Partners, and uh, I'll let you gentlemen introduce yourself as well. <clears throat> My name is Steve Kaufman. I'm the general manager of our Kansas business unit. My name is Dale Lohman. I run the uh, local store here in town. John Davidson, design professional for Prairie Land Partners. Okay, good like, yeah, good evening. Thanks for uh, again for some time here, and I'll just run through a, a quick PowerPoint. I know it's in your packet as well, but uh, kind of run through here a little bit and just kind of explain a little bit about Prairie Land Partners. I know you, you are familiar with, obviously, the location here, but as we look at Prairie Land Partners as a whole, we have 15 locations throughout the state. 
Um, and just looking at the different color coded, I know it's a little tough on the screen there, maybe your packet's a little clearer, but the, uh, the mustard colored pins, so to speak, are the areas where the board has decided and, and is willing to focus uh, some investment in the facilities that we have. So um, our Wamigo uh, facility, we're doing an expansion there. The Kingman facility, we're looking at a new build there as well, as well as Iola here, which is uh, exciting. You know, we're excited that the board has decided that those are the locations in Iola happens to be one of those so um, you know the other location that you see there in green are are uh, locations that need some work and uh, but they're not quite as elevated as as the ones in, in as the mustard colored ones there and then the kind of the orangish ones those are our newest facilities and you'll see some of the renderings here that John's group has done for us and it kind of mirrors those newer facilities and what they offer the community as well as our employees um, from an efficiency standpoint as well as a safety standpoint as well so I'll move on and, and gentlemen feel free to jump in as needed here um, all of you like I said are familiar with this facility um, as you can see there's been several um, additions throughout the years back to the records that I can see uh, this was put in, in in the 1970s early 70s and then I talking with Dale you know there's been probably five or six different additions as the dealership has grown to meet the demands of the you know not only the equipment size but also you know recruiting and things like that but as you can see here uh, there's not a lot of of uh, you know flash when it comes to it. it's very functional um, but it's something that you know we've been able to add on to throughout the years but uh, obviously we've kind of outgrown that and I'll kind of give you a little bit of a uh, in a bit kind of a comparison on what the equipment was back then when it was originally built to what it is to today so uh, the current acres that we have there is a, approximately six acres split into two parcels there with the main building parcel being about two acres and then an additional four acres so you know we look at this facility as a very viable piece um, you know for somebody else in the community to utilize um, you know whether that's somebody that's uh, you know already in the community needing for you know room for expansion or anybody that would look to come into the city of Iola with a business opportunity so there's there's some good acreages there obviously for the right business um, we just felt for us that we've outgrown that space and, and really need the expansion space where we're you know where we're at north northeast of town there so uh, just a little bit of layout there like I mentioned this you know up in the upper right hand corner that's a 7700 that was the big combine back in the early 70s uh, the and the big header with 25 foot head on there uh, Today in the lower left there we've got an X9 combine which is our biggest machine with a 50 foot head on it. So we've almost, you know, we've doubled the size of the equipment. Um, so as we look at building new facilities, you know, we look at how we accommodate that from a size standpoint as well as from a safety and efficiency standpoint of our employees. So. Um, a little bit about who we are. Like I said, we're a 15 store dealership. Um, the Iola store uh, became a part of the Prairie Land organization in 2019. And uh, we currently have 40 individuals there. I know your packet says 39. I was corrected by our HR that we do have one more there, so I, I missed that. I apologize. But we added additional one to the sales and administrative positions with the precision ag position that we have there. Um, we have seven parts positions and then 25 service positions. And as we talk about the you know the service side of things we'll talk about that a little bit more on this new expansion and and really how we're focusing there on retention and recruitment as well not only for you know the, the front of office so to speak but uh, the service side as well um, we also offer internship opportunities I know Dale has very been very instrumental in uh, hiring interns throughout the years um, we actually have an intern that we recently hired that had worked for us for two years and in a different dealership for another year um, so we're excited about having him back in the community um, Cole Regeer is his name and uh, Dale worked with him and, and we were very excited to have him come back to the to the community and the dealership um, we also offer scholarship opportunities for student technicians so people that are looking into go the Votex side and diesel mechanics um, we have a great program for that where we'll we'll have and I'll show you a photo here in a bit and I know it's in your packet but we've got opportunity for young people uh, to attend technical colleges where we uh, purchase the tools that they'll need as well as the, their tuition so um, do you guys have anything to add to that program at all 
So <coughs> r r real quick, I just want to say too that uh, we had another one of our interns, uh, Cameron Schilling. He's from the Westphalia area, and he's a full-time employee up at, uh, at Pacific Junction at the John Deere dealership up there right now too. So uh, it's working really well for us and developing and, and trying to keep our young people at home. Okay. And then we have also the uh, the military hiring program that we work very closely with John Deere on, and that's where um, you know individuals are are not fully retired yet, but looking for a different avenue. And we we have been able to accommodate multiple people in that program. We've hired several, and we have several in the program as as we speak right now. So that's been a, a good opportunity for us to help with that uh, reintroduction into the workforce. Um, Talking about the, the interns that we do, you see this picture here. Um, there's about 17 interns in that, and just what we invest in those interns. Uh, this happened to be what we called an equipment rodeo at our Clay Center facility, uh, where they got to experience driving one of the biggest machines, uh, combines and harvesting with that that John Deere produces, uh, able to bail behind that machine, utilize the uh, you know a, a tractor and loader to move hay off the field, and then dig a little bit with some compact construction equipment. Just investing and those those interns showing them what uh, what we provide to producers and communities and getting them familiar with it and just spending some time with them there uh, that's it's been a real focus for us and then like Dale mentioned we've we've had success with that this is what we call our signing days and most of you are familiar with that from a college uh, perspective where they an athlete would sign you know and uh, to go play with for a college this is what we do for our student technicians that have signed with us and, and we're going to provide a scholarship for so Dale had multiples of those. You see three different families here that took part in that not that long ago. But uh, I think Dale mentioned that he's got uh, three technicians in the second year program and, and three in the first year program and fully intends to continue that because that's kind of uh, like he likes to say our, our farm club, so to speak, for filling in as, as people, you know, retire out and things like that but it's uh, it's a really neat program and really catching a lot of traction for us and then like I mentioned the, the military hiring program that's just a little more information on that there but uh, we're excited like we said on this uh, proposed new dealership and what it has to offer and just wanted to run through some of the benefits you know we see job growth opportunities here and and Steve I might let you talk to that overall growth plan a little bit on those job growth opportunities <clears throat> well, one thing I would mention is uh, we are we are looking at uh, our precision ag within our company, and we are restructuring some of that within our structure right now to to even provide more opportunities as this equipment um, serves our customers. There is a lot of technology on it. I'm not going to get into it too much, but we have sea and spray sprayers that now just identify quarter inch weeds and, and allow the crop to be there and only specifically hit the weed. So we have a lot more technology diagnostics and part of that is just the recruitment piece that we feel like a facility like this is really going to help recruit and retain um, the people we're looking for to bring either, I'm going to say keep those those kids, if you will, or the young people into a uh, community like this instead of having finding that technology somewhere else. So we're excited about that. And um, the other side of it is we, uh, with our job growth on, uh, you mean just the numbers? Yeah. Yeah. So right now we have 14 technicians that are uh, full time. You know, our plan and our growth strategy is to move that to 25. And that is, you know, kind of the plan we put together with this facility. We would add a couple parts people with that, um, and we would add a couple miscellaneous positions. So, you know, we're looking at 10 to 15 people around, a, you know, somewhere around a 40% growth strategy for just uh, bringing people into this community or this area through those jobs. So, really excited about it. Yeah, some others there that I have listed, you know, state-of-the-art facility, we talked about that with efficiencies and safeties. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have cranes in the facility that really assist in in doing the technician's work. Um, we're excited about that. You know, increased cus customer satisfaction with those those uh, efficiencies gained. Um, you know, right now with those buildings, it's very difficult to get 
equipment in and out. We may have five pieces sitting in there, but one may not be able to get out because one isn't fully functional yet. So with the flow we have designed in the new facility, that wouldn't be an issue. Um, so you know, that's where we kind of see that increased customer satisfaction, new customer growth as well, um, increased capacity, employee retention. I know we've talked about that a lot. This is a fully HVA seed facility. Um, we're starting to do that with um, some of our other facilities, and, and that really uh, changes the perspective if you're not out there in you know 100 degree heat and humidity. Um, and we've, we've so far uh, been able to retrofit four of our facilities, and anything new we're putting in, we're actually we're, we're designing them with full HVAC. Uh, the ones that we've done, it, it's been made a world of difference. And uh, we're, we're really looking at a facility like this. Um, not only, I know when Dale was hired on here years ago, uh, he, he said he almost turned back around just with looking at the facility. We're thankful he didn't, right? But, uh, you know, that's this, I think, would, would definitely help in that recruiting retention aspect. And we believe it's a positive reflection on the city of Iola and the, and the surrounding area, um, you know, as an area for economic growth and opportunity, as, as well as future growth opportunities. I know uh, you guys are familiar with, you know, obviously the annexation and, and uh, you know, with those additional acres into the city obviously that's future down the road but we know that you know this isn't just about our facility that there's there's future possibilities as well which is exciting and then you know some things that we try and incorporate into these newer facilities are training rooms we do a lot of uh, training for our employees as well as our, our customers but what we found is that that becomes a community meeting place as well and I know you've got facilities like you know this that work very well but we have we have utilized those facilities for outside meetings meetings um, more than anticipated and we're happy to do that within the community so um, this this building does have that feature designed into it as well so this is actually a, John just got me this today which is a very exciting look and I know it's not in your packet so this is an aerial view of what that facility would look like of course with Oregon Road on the left there and, and 169 kind of on the right side but that's a, kind of an aerial view of what we're looking at um, nice size facility then with a what we call it you call it equipment shed for some reason we've coined it a combine shed but where, where customers equipment would come in and and you know they're, they're making an investment in that equipment, and a lot of them want it covered, and I don't blame them, right? So that's what we're looking at there. Uh, that's what you see on the backside there, but it's, it's nice to see this and, and put, some, uh, put some structure to what we've been planning all along. Okay. Yeah. So one thing I would like to mention here, and that is, um, even though there just shows a bunch of large equipment out front, um, if you look closely, there's mowers, there's compact utilities, and inside there's handheld tools. So we are here to serve the residents who have lawns, who have gardens, and who have small acreage, as, long, as well as the large property uh, owners with that farm as well. So I just want to point that out, that we are here to serve basically anybody that has, I guess, anything to cut, till, or, or mow, or whatever. So. Yeah. We'll have to get John some new uh, mowers and stuff to put out there. He lined it up with uh, large ag equipment. But Now, your current location takes – both lots are like six acres. What's that footprint? What's it sitting on? So this footprint here is sitting on 25 acres. Yeah. And like I talked, you know, with that meeting room and stuff, we've done a fair amount of clinics. Uh, we do them out in the field because, uh, you know, producers here, producers in central Kansas, uh, they want to know what technology and how to utilize it in Kansas, not from the I states or something like that. So we try our best to do that and put that information out there. So some of this acreage will be used for that as we move, move you know, forward and be able to have that. What's the square footage of the old building compared to the new building? So uh, the old is, we're probably increasing at double, right about there. This this is about a, John, help me out here, about a 64,000 square foot facility. So it's it's a sizable facility with, you know, and that's where Steve was talking with that growth plan of, you know, those additional technicians and, and employees. Um, you know, we try and build for the future, obviously, because everybody knows what build costs are, are doing. So the most you can get now, you know, the, the more economical it is. So, um, can, can I yeah, go ahead. So, so I just, I just want to speak to that. So the biggest portion of that is 
aftermarket. So that would be the service and the size of this equipment has gotten so large that the biggest portion of that growth is going to be in, in the service area and then along with then we're going to have to have a lot more parts in stock so we have to have more parts storage area. So that, that's why that's why it's getting so much bigger but our, our, our growth has been awesome. The, the community being here in, in the city of Iola and, and just, just the way the, the local farming Are you going to strictly stick with farm equipment and stuff and mowers or, or are you going to expand into construction? So yeah, so we do have construction. It's compact construction equipment. Of course, you know, through John Deere, there's multiple levels in that and ours is the compact is what we're, we're able to sell. So your skid steers, your compact track loaders, your mini excavators, things of that nature. Um, is you can work on anything. Oh yeah, we, yeah. And Steve reminds me, we do work on any and all. <laughs> so the big stuff can come in here. It's just a matter of being able to sell and retail the new, the new items. Could we trade for those things? You bet. Yeah. Yeah. So as we look at that, you know, it, we, as with any project, you know, there's, there's hurdles, right? So, um, you know, we look at a number of them, and, and we've crossed some of them already, thankfully. But, you know, one of them is, is utilities, and obviously that's why we're, we're here this evening in front of you. And, you know, the other is just the overall build costs. I mean, they have, they've escalated considerably over the last several years. Um, so with that, you know, with an investment in the size of the building it is, it, it's substantial. And that's, you know, those are some of the hurdles, and that's why we're, we're here um, so just to, to get into those you know again we we uh, appreciate the partnership with the city of Iowa and you know again believe it's a, a strong um, place to do business and we want to be here um, we, we think it's a, a great area for economic growth and opportunity um, so you know really what we're looking for and able to make this happen um, is is to be able to uh, ask the city to have the city water to the property boundary as one of them um, the next one would be the city sewer to the property boundary and uh, you know in talking with with several people you know it's it's not uh, it's something that we have done before in the past with other cities as well where they've, they've brought it to property boundaries so we can make this happen um, so I know there's uh, you know concerns with precedences and things like that and I understand those things um, I just know that other other facilities we've been been able to have that provided for us which really helped us uh, get over that hurdle so to speak of, of making that complete investment and uh, in building that that facility and then you know any necessary rights ways um, that would be needed to run those utilities out there is, is really what we're coming in front of you today for. So I, yeah, I, at this time, if there's, you know, you have questions or um, anything that uh, has come to mind as we've run through this, feel free to ask. Uh, so you already kind of spoke just on economic development, but also I see this as like economic sustainability also in a sense that keeping you all here and helping you grow helps us um, but looking at your map other than independence there's nobody else in southeast Kansas or for that matter eastern Kansas so how much business does this dealership get from surrounding counties and surrounding areas sure good good question that's one I'll turn over to Dale so <laughs> What's that? Your counties yeah, so, so, so basically, what this doesn't show is that we we also have other John Deere dealerships. There's one in Pittsburgh, and there's one in Baldwin. They are over here to the east and to the north and to the south. But uh, when when you talk about what we cover, we figure that Iowa we touch nine counties, so we serve nine a nine county area. So we're bringing a lot of people in here uh, to do business with us locally. And the, the nice thing is, and I hear this a lot, but uh, people people come into town and they end up going to Walmart and they end up going to a restaurant. And uh, but we're we're drawing people in from a pretty big circle, but. We run, we run five, right now we run five field service vehicles serving those nine counties and that's going to continue to grow. That's our largest, you know, we need to increase our footprint and the size of our shop, but we also need to increase the size of our mobile fleet because we're just taking care of more customers and we're, and we're growing all the time. How much money does the Iola uh, location run in terms of uh, sales tax? 
So that's a yeah, that's a good question. And of course, you know, a lot of our larger purchases are, are tax exempt, right? So I'd, in last year's sales tax, the one percent that, according to our records, that like the city received was a little over almost eleven and a half, eleven thousand five hundred, or a little higher than eleven six, I think, is what it was. We're on track for a little bit higher this year. Um, through the first six months, we're over seven thousand. Um, so that's yeah, that's the one percent, you know. And again. Uh, you know, with the majority of, not the majority, but, you know, the, the tax-exempt ag equipment we sell, that's where it, it doesn't look as high as maybe some other businesses. What's the average weight? So it varies. It depends on kind of the position. Um, looking at the median income, at least from what I could tell from, you know, past records, I don't know if it's jumped in the most recent years, but, you know, we'd be about 25% probably at, at the lower level, 25% above that median income, household income, from what I could find. Is that helpful? And then, of course, it goes, it goes up from there. I have one question. Um, you were talking about the amount of employees. I, I guess I was a little confused. Um, your slide says that you have 25 service positions. Mm -hmm. Those are not all filled, though? So they are. They're, they're okay. all filled. So you're talking like a, a service manager. I think, was it 17 or 14 or 17? 14. 14 okay. full-time. So then you have, you know, the the uh, student technicians okay. that are included in that, the six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so my question um, really is, do you forecast being able to add to your staff? I know that you mentioned increasing your from five field service vehicles hopefully to increase it up by you know supply and demand um what is your forecast as far as more employees sure yeah that's a great question um so that's what steve was referencing a little bit too was that 10 to 15 additional um on top of you know with the ability to with the expansion and the additional room that is really in, in order to support an investment like that we we really need to grow that much because it's, it's a sizable investment and and where we sit today uh you know it, it uh, wouldn't make economic sense if we didn't grow does right. that make sense right right yeah. we gotta pay the bills yeah <laughs> so does that does that clear up the numbers i was talking about yes okay so thank I, you i have a question for matt and corey so things that they're asking for the extending water and extending sewer what what is the cost to the city for those? Do we have an idea yet? The water is included. It, you've got it in your Water's packet. In it. It's uh, <clears throat> sixty nine k. Yeah, I was going to say just under yeah. seventy thousand. I don't have that one. So, that includes the ten thousand right purchase uh, rights. Right before the slides. Question on the Sure. Steve, do you want to answer that? <laughs> well, yesterday. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, so we're going to, we, I mean, our plan is once we work out a few details um, here on, on some of these uh, details, and we'll get started right away with some some groundwork is if we can get a, a permit and keep going here so now what we'll have is we we look at the building delivery would not deliver till after the first of next year so we could get what we could done up to that point and then once the building gets going then we would go into that phase and then we would just go till we're till we're done so i don't know if yeah. Well, we talk about a completion time for sure. But. Yeah, I mean, I, John, you might have a better idea on completion time probably. You know, a, a building of this facility or size would, would take about a year, give or take, 10 to 12 months for completion. Um, our biggest holdup now <clears throat> has been the building company, or the, the you know, getting the building. The, the, the used to be called Red Iron. It's gray now, right? <clears throat> but um, that's our biggest holdup. Um, so once we know a lot of these hurdles are overcome and we're able to move forward with the investment, we lock in a building spot, and then you know everything hinges on that. What does it look like working with the county, or do we do we need to work with the county to get water and sewer over there? No, no okay. issues there. That's us. Okay, I just didn't know with Oregon. Uh, with the with the annexation. 
we can provide them sewer. That was kind of the reason the annexation took place. Mm -hmm. The rezoning's in the works. Probably will be, is it the next meeting or the meeting after for the zoning? It'll be the first meeting in September for final um, action. We'll come to you all. The only other hurdle would be the rural water, but they right. gave us a sell price. So, and we're we're, we're working rights. on that. I, I I don't see any issues with getting the water. Yeah. Right. It's just a matter, just a right. paperwork matter. <clears throat> and those water rights are just for prairie lands. The the plot. ten thousand dollar buyout is just for the twenty five acre site. Yeah. Not the rest of the hundred and whatever acres. So should other development come up, we have to go back to them. Uh, that's a that's a good Bob Johnson oh, question. Okay. Uh, we're going to work on that as well as our electric service territory out there uh, to try and gain that. It's you know that's a process in its own right. So the the electric side is a three year process. Water, yeah, water water is a, it's worked out well for us now. It it could have been a longer process. And is the electric something the process can start once we uh, get the zoning complete? Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, we Cause, could. Because if they're a year away well, from we, building, We won't be able to serve them. Right. We won't oh. serve them electric. Heartland, right. Yeah. Because it, it would take a, well, we'd have to buy it out similar to what we're yeah. doing with, with Rural 5. Or well, we, I should 5 say we can start the process it. for... The rest of the acres the rest that has been it. annexed, but not the 25 that they've been okay. on. Essentially, all we're going to serve it, Steve, if as this moves forward, is water and sewer. Corey, what's it take to get the sewer? Uh, well, that where, an engineer is going to have to do. I figured. Where does it? Where would it go? Well, back when the hospital was built, we dead end right in front of the hospital, the new facility. So. What, 600 foot, roughly, I'm just guessing on footage, but probably 600 foot south of Oregon Road on the west side. Uh, there's a couple different options, and I know uh, he can ex explain it a little better than I can, I'm sure, because they've looked at it. Um, I don't have any numbers. I think they've done some crunching. We just, you know, for purposes of this meeting, just to give you a ballpark, 30,000 foot look at what this costs. Um, Corey is right, the sanitary sewer exists about 600 feet south of Oregon Road, in front of the hospital. We're about 2,850 lineal feet from our property line to where that manhole exists. Um, and there's, there's a million ways to do this, right? There's, there's a way to do it where just Prairie Land Partners is served. There's a way to do it so all that acreage is served. There's a way to do it so any future development along Oregon Road could be served. But from if you're going to start with, you know, going and buying a F-150 XLT, it's, you know, $250,000 probably at a minimum to get sewer all the way to the front of the hospital up to as much as 475 if you want to put an 8-inch full service line that could service anything that would get built out there in the future and also, you know, have a lift station, a well type lift station. Um, or you can go with what we call a package unit, which could serve Prairie Land Partners and you can get those numbers down, like I said, probably under 300. But in any case, it's going to be 250 to, to say 500 ballpark. Just depending on what you guys want to right. service. It's all going to depend. I mean, and we, we've got to jump through KDHE's hoops. I mean, this thing's going to have to be designed by an engineer for a main extension, whether it's a force main with a lift station, unless they run private down it and come in and just tie into where we're at. We can do that without going through KDHE. So there's, out of that 2850, 28, about 750 of it um, would be forced main. Um, the other 2,100 feet could be gravity. So as you come back east from the property line, you drop into a little swale there. That's where that lift station would get put. We would actually pump it up to the intersection. And then from the intersection, I think, I think it's about 100 feet, we would probably still have to pump it. But then gravity would take over about the last 500 feet down in front of the hospital. And, and we did all that just, just so you would have an order of magnitude. Um, nothing's been engineered, nothing's been surveyed, but it's probably relatively yeah. close. Do you th going downstream from there, how do those lines look in terms of capacity, added uh, capacity? We just rebuilt, it all goes to Howard Lift Station. 
and that's the one we just rebuilt the pumps. The wet well was good, so I, I don't have a capacity concern, I guess, Joel, with what we're what what they're adding or actually even anything else, unless we had some kind of a you know a Russell Stovers or some kind of a processing plant go in that would would create probably a problem but you know residential or something like that is or commercial like what they're dealing with it wouldn't be an issue I mean and he's right in my opinion we've got we've got two options or, or well three I tend to fall right somewhere in the middle I think we ought to at least get that that gravity as far north as we can um, through this process and in the you know the church is sitting out there too that we could potentially serve eventually um, I don't know I, short term it's probably a grinder pump and then pumping it down to us is probably the the quick fix uh, you got to look at that acreage bad thing is we don't know what's going to develop out there so how do you how do you plan for that right do you build it big and hope something comes so yeah, now the sewer was built later, but the road was, you're right. The road was that way. So, yeah, the sewer is probably the least that we have the least information on at this point in the process. Water's, you know, this is, as far as physically going out and putting it in, it's a small project for our guys, to be honest with you. Um, contractor we wouldn't do hardly any of that internally so I'm in favor of doing the water but I want more information before I decide anything on the sewer I think maybe hire a uh, hire somebody to come out and give us an idea of what the cost would be anybody else individual thoughts I would like to the gravity as far north as we could run it and then running our forced main back to that point which would cut off say 500 feet um, you know as Drew alluded to I mean every every store they showed up there I've actually built for them and this is this has happened many times because we always have to go out find a very large piece of ground which is never within the city limits we usually have to get an extend you know, most of the time the sewer has been brought, but understand your guys' position on it. Um, we can we can do a three-inch force main from the dealership and get it all the way back to in front of the hospital. The problem we're going to run into is we're going to have to get easements. And as a private entity, we don't have a lot of clout to go back to these property owners and say, hey, we need to dig a line through your front yard. So... It's going to have to be a cooperative effort, however it's done. I mean, whether it's done from a design standpoint or whether it's done as a private or public uh, project. Um, we've done all the preliminary design work that can be done without physically putting an actual drawing for bid out. I mean, we've, we've done the legwork on it. Um, so those numbers aren't going to be very far off. Um, you know, the cost to do the three inch force main, which would actually service a little more development out there. Not a great deal more development, but some more development. It's a low pressure type system, It would right? be a low pressure above, you know, it, it would run with the ground surface. It wouldn't be gravity where you might have. And the reason uh, the well system is so expensive for the gravity is because at some point, you know, it may be three feet under the ground, but at some point it may be 15 feet under the ground to get, get 
the gravity to work. Where with a forced main, you can just basically run with the topography because if you're forcing it up and down, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. So it's a lot cheaper to dig the trench for a forced main than it is to do for a gravity main. So is uh, a three inch line acceptable? I thought the minimum was four. Three inch line for forced for what we're doing would, would be very adequate. Um, four wood could be better. Um, but for what these guys do and what most businesses do, it's, it's three inches is adequate. Um, the way we have this design and those numbers come from, we have eight inch gravity lines because you want a little bigger line when it's gravity, just so you can get the volume to move if it's relatively flat. Um, and the rest of it we have four inch. But if, you know, if these guys are developing it on their own nickel, they're probably just gonna do a three inch and, and uh, run it however far they need to. But it, it's certainly adequate. We, we could even go to two inch, to be honest with you, with the grinder pumps. I think in terms of developing the area, especially on the sewer side of things, um, I think we miss an opportunity by not putting that expansion out there. So many businesses nowadays, when it comes time to relocate or it comes time to expand, they're not looking for places that they can start doing it six months and two years down the road. They want something that's build ready. And so, you know, if we could build out the uh, sewer out there, if we could start with the water rights, if we can start with the, you know, getting access to uh, the acreage as far as electric goes, I think it's an investment in the right direction. And I think by partnering and having a uh, having a contractor come out and take a look at it and give us uh, on paper numbers, uh, I think that the partnership of uh, getting a engineering team to look at it and things like that and come back with solid numbers would be a way to go. And then I think that the benefit to us to building it out there is is that at that point the only thing we have left to do is build the road um, and acquire the rest of it. And it gives us uh, ready to build sites. I mean, the renewable battery uh, plant that went in in Eudora was, was a huge deal for them. And the, one of the reasons that they were chosen as a site is their proximity to the city, but also because they had the, uh, they had the area ready to go so that they could break ground immediately. And I think we missed an opportunity by maybe saving a few dollars today only to turn around five years from now and pay three times as much because we know inflation isn't going that direction. Well, I'd like to say that, uh, you know, I think this is a great thing for the city. I mean, it uh, helps us expand and grow. I mean, I think, I think that's an excellent site that you've chosen. It would be great, great for the future for the city. Uh, Yes. Yeah, that's just water for, and it does include the the buyout for the service territory from Anderson Five. Corey. Yeah, that's, that's the $10, the Correct. That's a six inch line you've got here. Is that right? Yes. And is that larger than what John Near Deer would need and would that be an adequate size to serve potential growth? Yeah, we're not gonna undersize it. Okay. We would lay six inch regardless out there. It'll serve residential, it'll serve unless it's a high volume customer, that six inch will serve anything. It'll be adequate. Okay. And we and we just extended this this would be a what, about three thousand I can't remember how many feet. I want to say three thousand feet. Uh, basically it passed where we stopped looping it here just this summer for the hospital or looping it from Cedarbrook over to to that corner that's where the fresh dirt is now that was the yeah we okay. just tie in right there on that new piece and we we kind of set that up knowing this development was coming down the road so if we needed to extend it there's a I mean it's it's ready to be extended I noticed this also included fire hydrant for being set up out there we would do that a lot of reason just for us to be able to flush because it is going to be a probably right. I mean, it serves for fire protection as well, Mark. But 
to, to make the water flow, we will need to go out and flush occasionally just to get the boring levels to cover up for us doing the water because that a benefit to us having that water line out there. My feelings would be to have the council consider doing the water in house and with regard to the sewer, that's a big cost that I just don't see where we could adequately budget that. But I would be interested in looking at uh, a sewer upgrade. Um, if they're going to put in a three inch, what would it? What would the additional be for a five or six um, for future growth? Because I, I have to agree with Nick that. Um, this is an opportunity to grow Iola's footprint. Um, we're, we're pretty much landlocked south with the uh, flooding. Uh, we've tried to get builders in here. We've done the infrastructure at Cedar Brook, so we've had a lot of expenses there. Plus, we've got the future highway build uh, through town. Um, so uh, tacking on a 400K build for a sewer, I just I, I just think we're strapped for funds. I think to answer your question, Steve, upsizing that force main won't do us any good, right? I mean, unless we go full blown yeah. with a lift station. Right. I mean, it, yes. Well, and and I think we need to think outside the box on that. If you get too large a size of uh, force main, then you have to increase the size of the wet well. Ran into that with the airport project, the potential of it being septic at times. That's why they didn't want to put the six inch in or make it active. That's why they're parallel on those two out at the hospital or the uh, the airport project, is because it's cheaper to put the pipe in right now, but the volume isn't there, and they were afraid they were going to have basically septic lines. Just, just as a barometer for that, the well system. Of that size in now. Well, I've been in favor of partnering with the, uh, the water portion of that. Hey, Corey, did you say that it was down, or what you guys said it was downhill, his gravity feed from the corner to... All the way from the hospital down to where uh, Dorothy Howard used to live, where Derek Wallace lives down there. That w would be basically straight across from Struckler Road, back towards the college. So, a sewer line, where would we tie into the sewer at? We'd tie in in front of the hospital. It's all gravity. Basically, it collects uh, Carl's Edition, um, Southview, which is just to the north of okay. Melody Acres, and then it collects the hospital. Well, I mean, we could surely provide a gravity line connection at the corner. Well, I think we can get it close to the corner, and that's that's what I'm saying. I, I think it's beneficial long-term for us to at least have gravity as far as we can get it yeah you know yeah i'm not an engineer but I, I i still think you can get that gravity line all the way to the corner that's just me uh it's pretty shallow i mean it's yeah you know it's not very deep because we were coming up and dead in and right so um, that, that house that's on the corner there just north of the hospital are they on city sewer oh, they're on septic they they're they never have attached now, you know, between that, I can see a couple potential 
people out there right on the edge of that that would want to attach at some point when their septic tank fails. Um, at this point, I think they're all functioning, so they're probably not too worried about it. Fair enough. So I'm going to say it. Uh, sewer talk in more ways than one really does stink. <laughs> uh, but I am optimistic uh, that I would, We several people have already said their personal stuff, what they personally believe. Um, but I think if we were to build a little bit larger for the future, um, my Uncle Gary talks about it all the time, obviously, Marshmallow Lane was known as the road to nowhere when it was first built. People don't think about sewers though, but it'd be a sewer to nowhere um, for a little bit with people connecting into it. Um, and there wouldn't be much claim to fame for the for the council in that sense. But if, like Councilman Kinder said, um, if we have future development out there that chooses to come because we, you know, build it we and they, they will come. Um, that's always optimistic and so I would like to work out some sort of agreement on sewer instead of just saying outright they need to take it. That's my thought on it, Mayor. Sorry, I've been no. hold on to that in for a while. That's not even right to say either. Um, yeah, that's been on my mind. I uh this is going on YouTube? <laughs> I, uh, I agree with Josh. I, I, I'm in favor of partnering with the water, and um, I'd like to see what, what opportunities we have to partner with the sewer if we can, can get um, some opportunities for, for, for I wouldn't say growth and expansion, but, the, but, but to build that capacity in there for us for future growth and see what the costs are and at least, you know, what see what they, because we don't know what those are yet. Um, what the next step? Mark, what's your feelings? Okay. I want to go at least to the corner, if not, you know, on, some way. on, on the sewer. Yeah. Okay. Joe, what's your final feelings? Um, I mean, the water seems like a no-brainer, and that to do help out with that, and the sewer, we just need. We're going to have to work out some numbers, but I think we should try to grow the community. Okay. Yeah, and there's a lot of options to that. Joel. Um, I feel the same way. I want to make it a cooperative effort between Prairie Land Partners and the City of Iola. Um, as far as water, I'm on board with what the rest of the council is going towards. As far as sewer, we're just talking about it right now. I'm a, I got to see things in black and white. And we have the water in black and white but we don't have sewer numbers. And so to make a commitment on anything like that that I'm not seeing in front of me, I'm reluctant, but I do want to see growth. So once that's presented to me, then I can make a more educated decision. Okay. So Matt and Corey, it sounded like the majority would be in favor of water, but we need more numbers on what a partnership with the sewer would look like. Is that enough direction at this time? I, just, I have one question. Yeah, I, is I we what, at one. what level yeah. on the water? Because I mean, historically, we have not paid for all of this, and the water fund's not that healthy. We all know. Where do we pay for? We can absorb the the equipment and the labor. Yeah, f fifty-two thousand dollars is the the actual I, cash. I don't know where you come up with the other dollars to pay for the yeah. materials. Uh, and if, if the direction is going to be find the money, then then we will. As you all know, the condition of the water fund, it, it can't. That's sad to say that we we can't we can't take that kind of hit. So we'll we'll find the money somewhere. Um, and then on, on the sewer side, is the direction going to be that we find an engineer to do this? That's what I was saying. I want I want things in writing. I want their proposal to come back to us. Before what would it we, cost to hire an engineer? You guys have well, an engineer, right? I was going to say the other. I was going to say, I, why are we footing the bill? 100 no, of the bill I think on an the engineer? idea was whatever their sewer cost, both the gravity and the force fed. But then, what would the additional be for future growth if you put a bigger pipe in? 
Yeah, they, I want, I they would, would like do that. A, B, and C type of options or something to that Open effect. Open or not. Or oh, we are. Step up. Um, so we are engineers. We can we can design the sewer line. We have to be hired by someone to design the sewer line. At this point, we don't know who owns it yet. So if the city wants to engage us to design it, or at least design enough to get it in the hands of some bidders to get real numbers, we can do that. Um, if you want us to design the whole thing and get it in the hands of bidders, we can do that with the city's input on what direction you want to go, whether it's 500 feet of the gravity fed and the rest is force main, whether it's a three inch line, whether it's a four inch line, we can do all that. But someone, whether Corey or Matt or whom we have to meet with to make those decisions, you know, we will need that direction before we can give you hard numbers. Um, I don't I don't know what it is you're, you're trying to accomplish. Um, if you give me a parameter of what you would like to see out there as far as development, we can design a sewer system to that that's the most economical and then get it bid. But I have to be engaged to do that. To date, Prairie Land has an engagement because they don't know if they're going to own the line or whether the city's going to own the line. So we're more than willing to help out any way we can. Or if you guys have a city engineer that you work with and is familiar with your sewer systems within the city, then you know you can hire those guys to do that as well. You know, I, I can answer most of those questions. I can tell you that our numbers are pretty close. Um, they're not going to come back more than 10% off probably, but. We, we have to be engaged for us to give you numbers because you're going to hold us responsible for those numbers. So I can't just give you a number without, you know, being engaged and having a contract with someone. Okay, so I have a question, uh, Corey or Matt. Um, how is, explain to me how that's different than what we've got sitting right here in front of us. I, you have needs. The, Okay, but you, but you have, but it's they state, have. It's state involvement. Right. Well, you know, uh, water line has to be, I'm sorry, uh, sewer line has to be uh, designed by an engineer with an engineer stamp submitted to KDHE for their approval. Water line, you can just do it. Okay, well, let's, let, let me back up for a second then um, and check the first box off. To me, I feel like is not the priority to take care of this first. Yeah, well, I mean, we need to make a decision on this. I'd like to get my guy started on that yeah. just for scheduling purposes alone. But right. So my, I mean, my thoughts is we need to finalize this right. and move on to the sewer situation. Um, and historically, we've helped out existing businesses in Iola in the last five to ten years. Um, with equipment, uh, just a second, Carl. I'm sorry, but with for equipment and labor, and in this case, is a total of seventeen thousand eight hundred sixteen dollars and eighty cents. Did I read that correctly? Equipment total was eighty seven eighty. Labor is nine thousand thirty six eighty. So that's a total of seventeen eight sixteen eighty. And is that basically what we've helped out a couple of existing businesses in the past? The two that come to my mind is uh, the SIG Tire and Auto when they relocated and built their new building out there on the east side of town. And that's what we did. They weren't with water. They were with electric. Um, so I mean, yes, to answer your question, that's what we did with, with the electric side in that case and with um, the tire grinding out on the south end of town. The same. Um, the only other thing within the last few years would have been peerless. Right, and that's a little were, different. That, that um, was a new business coming to And there was a contractual work. agreement between us, Peerless, and the county right. at that time. Um, I mean, I'm open to the majority of what goes. I'm, I'm just, I am sitting on the fence on this, to be quite honest. Um, but the one thing that I do feel a little adamant about is the $10,000 purchase of the rights. I feel that that should fall back on Prairie Land because we don't, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're not benefiting from that pur purchase. Because if we were to go out and develop the rest of that land, we still have to purchase water rights from Anderson County. Yeah. Purchase, obtain. I'm not sure if it's a purchase type. The rest of it. it there is a process. I'm not sure what that <laughs> process is, but we're going to find out. Okay. All right. 
Well, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm asking for the wrong thing or unrealistic, but I feel like I want to complete this task first and no. then move on, but. Joel, my, I mean, my comfort level from me inside that office is doing what you've done in the past with the other utilities. Uh, we can absorb that easily, I think. You know. Uh, yeah, we discussed what two meetings ago. What I, our I have was a lot at. of concern over the sewer because I am not a engineer. I don't have the knowledge in that. I think that. Sh I think to me, they need to provide that sewer plan of what it's going to take to serve them, and then give it to us, and then we decide what that next step is because. I, I'm not that, I, I'm just not that fluent in it. <laughs> I mean, we could take that information and then build from it, correct? Sure. As far as build and figure out what we're wanting to do with it for futuristic plans, or no? Am I? Yeah, we still have to go through KDH to go from the hospital up to the corner? Yes. Yes. That piece we would. Their force, if it's a private force main, we would not. It would be all theirs from point A to point B where it dumps into us gravity wise. Now if you go to building the force or building that lift station and we're able to hook other people up to it, then it's then we gotta go through KDH again because the potential is to serve more than that one customer. No, I was talking about equipment and labor total. So that's where I came up. That's where I came up with my seventeen thousand dollar figure. Uh, and I guess I'd like to add to that something to consider and maybe educate us as. Um, for the purchase of the water rights, I guess from a business standpoint, why would they pay for that water right just to turn around and let us put a meter to charge them for the water? It's our business. That's a valid point, Mayor. I, I, you know, I mean, I mean, from a business mean, stand, that's what yeah. I'm asking for is an, an education from those who do this. We're we're representatives of the of the community. Um, and it seems to me that if I bring a truck in here and sell a product out of it, do I charge the people coming a, they have to buy the rights to that product or I just sell it to them because it's my product to sell to them. So why would you pay a $10,000 fee for the rights to the water then if that's the case, they might as well build out the water themselves in some sort of agreement with the rural water. The only issue there is rural water can't provide the volume. That's why it needs to come from Iola. Well, and not only that, but I mean, not that it's something we plan, but if something were to happen in Prairie Land were to move, we would retain the water rights to it. Valid points. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, so my bottom line recommendation would be uh, I'll second you, Carl. Okay, Roxanne, did you get all that? <laughs> and, and if so, I'd like it read back and then we'll have discussion. So you're saying the city would be responsible for equipment and labor? And on the water. And the purchase of services. Right. Okay. Essentially the motion would be for us 
to or for Prairie Land to pay forty one thousand seven thirty five in material cost and waive the rest. Correct. Okay. I was just trying to shorten it up for you, Roxanne. <laughs> <laughs> I I will mention I did look up the SIG thing. We did pay for the transformer also. Yeah, and we typically pay for the transformer on the uh, inside the city limits. If it was outside the city limits, we'd try and recoup that transformer cost. But okay, we had a motion a second. Is anyone, is everyone clear on what the motion was? So we had some further discussion. <clears throat> Did you have a question about yeah, the motion? So uh, my question would be: so, if, and the forty-one thousand is material. Yes. And the so would yeah. My question is: who owns that line? If we pay for that material, do we? We would obtain uh, once it's installed. We take it over. It's it would be ours in the end. So it would be our responsibility to repair. Right. Ours up to up to their meter. Their meter. Right. Up to your meter and fire line. It would be. We would lay it in public right away. From basically Kentucky and Oregon over and likely it's going to be on that side of the street just because of the room that we've got and then we would we would shoot I guess a six inch line I think that's what you guys are going to need for fire suppression right shoot across the street with a fire suppression line have a valve and then you would take your fire in from the property line and we'd have a meter for your for your water for your domestic side too and then only thing you guys would own in the end is basically on site. So what I didn't uh, specifically mention is uh, acquisition of the right of way necessary to put in the, the water line. We won't need any, Carl. Won't need any? No, we'll be able to fall within the road right away. Okay. Okay. We've had discussion. We've had a second. All in favor, aye. 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 I was a little weak. Let's show hands. <laughs> Opposed? Okay. Four to three. I guess that concludes it for tonight. Gentlemen. So what about the sewer? The sewer, my motion uh, was to have the Freeland Partners be the one contract. Give you a scope because you had asked. Oh, so, so that would be my question. Yeah. The scope of what I would like to see is I'd like to see the option. Um, I think you guys said it was an eight inch line that we would need if something like Russell Stover's were to go in out there, or would it be a high volume? You're going to have lift stations and everything else involved in that Absolutely. scenario. If, if Prairie Land is hiring me to design a system, yes. it's going to be specific to Prairie Land. That's fine. My, my question back to you guys is who, I know you want to participate in upsize Antline, who should we work with within the city to determine, is it Corey and Matt? Yes. To determine if you guys want to see that line upsized for future development. Because we're going to come back again with the minimal design package for their building. And I think your ballpark numbers, if we can, do, it, I think with those ballpark numbers that you had, I think putting it on that sheet of paper with your design of yours, then that they can make an informed decision in my mind with those numbers, those so ballparks. The, so, the, so the way that motion was made is we had to submit it and get it approved by KDHE uh -huh. before you can make any decision. I don't think it can go to KDHE until it's we fully submit designed. it. I think we have to submit it and it has to have an engineer stamp set of plans on it. I don't think you guys can do that. You can do it on our behalf, I think. But We can submit it. Okay. Our problem becomes, if it's a private line, as I said before, just what you said, we have to acquire the right. We have to acquire the rights to the right of way to get it to where we got to get it to. Right. Um, so anything we do is going to be a joint venture with the city. It sure. just has to be. Right. Um, we we can submit it. You guys would ultimately take responsibility of it to KD after KDHE's approval. If it's if it's just a little force main serving you. It's a service line from point A to point B. It would be all yours. And you wouldn't have to have a permit through KDHE. But we still have to get from point A to point right. B. Right, correct. So I just I just kind of want to work. I don't want to come back with and a plan and a And I'll be more than happy to help you with any of that. And then have another question goes. pop up like that where, you know, well, we didn't understand we had an option. I just want to make sure we have all the options covered 
because these guys do want to drop steel in January. And it's after that, it's about nine months to build the rest of the building, but they need to be out moving dirt before the frost hits. So these are all things that need to happen relatively quickly. My question, Corey, is... If it's your private line, yes. Yeah, if it would be just your private line, yeah, that would be... I may be speaking out of turn. I, that would be up to those guys, but the, if, if staff doesn't have the ability to waive that cost. Or pay I for would that. be open to partnering to find out what the different options were. I didn't know, I don't know if that could be a joint venture between the two of... We're, we're all willing to work with you guys. Anyway, right. So I just want to make sure that we're doing anything tables for everybody. process is for design to take place, submit to KDHE, and then before you submit to KDHE, once you've got some uh, numbers in black and white, you can bring that back. All your, all your questions answered. I, I think so. Obviously, we're going to go back and you know, circle the wagons and see what what it's going to take to get from here to there. Our policy has got more timing than anything. Understand. Corey, uh, I don't think we've got to start the water line. I mean, you said if you want to get your crew. As soon as I can talk to him tomorrow, we'll get it scheduled. It won't take us very long, guys. Honestly, we can a couple weeks. They can bust that out pretty fast. It won't take us long on the water. Could you clarify then the water? I mean, what, how that ended up, just the result there on the vote? And uh, so this sheet, from my understanding, what they did is when we go to lay that, you guys will be responsible for, for the 41,735.90 of the materials. So what we'll do is we'll go out and start building. You guys, according to our policies or practices, we need to have half of that payment before we start, which I'm not overly concerned about that. But when the project's done, we'll send you an, an invoice and you can pay the, the extension fee, is the way I interpret it. Matt? Right? Yeah. Okay. So guys, I just I just want to say that uh, some of you know me, some of you don't know me. I grew up in Mapleton, Kansas. Um, went to school at Uniontown, Kansas, from southeast, been from southeast Kansas my whole life. And I just wanted to say that uh, one of the biggest things when I was growing up on a farm and over there in the river bottoms at Mapleton, Kansas, was uh, Iola always had four dealerships. It had a John Deere dealership, a New Holland dealership, a, a stores, and and uh, um, Case IH, you know, and it was always a big deal when you're a kid to get to come to town with dad. And, and, and we, a lot of times we went to all four when we was here in town. My mom was an RN at the at the hospital here. Uh, and uh, it was, it was you know, it was just a, it was a neat experience growing up and being, coming to Iola and, and, and getting to come in and have Russ Cleaver say, hey, turkey butt, how you doing? <laughs> If anybody's ever had that experience before, but we get to look at the toys and stuff growing up, and and then Frank would always shake your arm. I mean, I remember being 10 years old, and Frank would be coming out there and remember my name and shaking my hand, and 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 I just want to leave the 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 committee here. I just I just want to leave you with Prairie Land. I'm I'm very proud to be part of Prairie Land. I'm very proud to be part of Southeast Kansas and the Iowa community, and I just want to remind this board here that. 
we're in the people business. That's who we are. And, and, and that's what this is about. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about our employees or our customers, but we are in the people business. And I just want to say thank you for your time and your consideration. Thank you, Thank guys. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Myra, Gabe, we're ready for you too. Just me. He's just a supportive husband. Okay. <laughs> just. That's good to say. It's good to have support. So the bummer is, is that my printer would not print anything because it lost its IP address. So my printer lost its IP address, so therefore I couldn't print anything that I wanted to. So um, I'm Myra Gleason. My address is not 416 South Cottonwood. It's 514 South That's Cottonwood. Close. It's okay. You're forgiven. <laughs> um, that was me. Um, huh? It's right on the second page. Hey. I got something right. She wrote it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> How did I miss that? I missed it too. Um, m maybe most of you know me. Uh, we own the coffee shop, or I, my husband and I own the coffee shop uh, on the corner of Washington and Madison. Many of you, we've served with our goods and our wares and our our coffee drinks. Um, this issue is just like my personal, so when I'm done extroverting during the day, I like to go introvert in my garden. Um, at my house at 514 South Cottonwood. Um, I, I had put, so we have foxes and we have rabbits. And uh, we, in my neighborhood, we have a lot of rabbits. So therefore, because you have rabbits, you have foxes. So when this fox appeared and the rabbits appeared in April, um, I had, what we're here for is, is, is chicken wire and, and fencing and things like that. Um, I had, I was had no intention of putting like any type of fencing other than I wanted like a two tier of cinder blocks in a in a in an area. Um, but when I saw the foxes and the rabbits, I decided to do something about it to preserve the garden because we use a lot of the produce in our coffee shop as well, not just in our home but in the coffee shop. So part of that, so I built it with T posts and chicken wire. And then I had gotten a call just from, um, from City Code and just said, hey, you got to take your fence down. Uh, you can't have chicken wire. Um, now, I will take responsibility and completely say that I didn't know I had to get a permit outside of like wood fences and things like that. So I'll take responsibility. Um, another part is there's so many chicken wire and T-post fences here in the city that I in my maybe naivety, uh, thought that it was going to be okay to put up something to protect my garden. So um, kind of what I want to accomplish tonight, have a discussion, obviously, and, and I'm not here to be the city council's chicken wire enemy or anything like that. I just want to have a discussion over language over definitions, over a unified city code ordinance. Um, in my uh, citation or violation, it was that um, I was in violation of Article 7, Section 16 through 703. And in the unified uh, city ordinance, it defines chicken wire as not permissible fencing. And then, but however, it does not define T posts. And it also does not define in the Allen County ordinance coding T posts at all. In fact, posts are just defined as posts, and there's no definition or clarity on what a post is supposed to or not be. So I've actually. I've actually written three amendments in my former life. I probably would have wanted to be a lawyer, but it would have ruined me. So with all of this, I really just love researching and seeing where, where the lines are. Um, language, I feel, is very important to enforcement. I also feel language is very important to any type of, if we're enforcing code or enforcing laws, that there needs to be clarity and definitions for those. For me, I don't even hear a year. So, I don't necessarily know all the ins and outs of everything, and nor do I know if I would necessarily need to get 
this type of fencing because my whole experience in my life has always been West Coast and West Coast codes and things like that. And so this has always been acceptable. So I'm learning new things here for sure, but I also want to make amendments and also have us update update in clarity and definitions on non-compliance, authority. Um, I would like to add gardens to section um, Article 7, section 16 through 703. I'd like to define what a garden is. Um, I would also like to put another amendment on here. But mostly I don't want to talk too much so you guys can answer questions and be like, <laughs> what did you think this was, Myra? And I'd be like, I don't know. But uh, and I would like to define, I would also like to define like chicken wire as well. I know most people know that, but the cattle wire, the chicken wire, the cloth, um, in non-residentials, obviously cloth and coverings and things like that, like those are permissible, but it's also in there too that when I went and approached the code enforcer, um, I had asked about the other chicken wire fences that were allowed and why they had been there. And uh, he had made a mention that if any of these structures were standing before he was in his tenure, then he, there was nothing that he could do about it. However, um, there's actually no definition or clarity in language. The only one that you can find is a nonconformity, which nonconformity then takes you to the Kansas statutes of Article, um, Article 12, Section 5 of those, but that is only for library and then different zoning within residential properties and non-residential properties. So with non-conformity, I would like, I couldn't find any type of grandfathered in, and I couldn't find any type of um, who the authority is to enforce these codes. It wasn't there in non-conformity, and there is no defining language as well on on like the grandfathered in on a start date. So there's no authority defined. Um, there's no grandfather defined, and so it's just kind of left me in, in a in a in a bit of wanting clarity because as somebody who's like really misunderstood, I have a desire to understand and I come from everything at a really, really good place in my heart. And so with this, I would really love to just gain clarity and understanding as I couldn't find this in either the Allen County Code or the, the um, City of Iowa Ordinance. And I feel language is very important for enforcement. Can I have water? My mouth is sticky. Want to know that um, since the citation was issued, the T post. Oh, he's um, since the citation has been posted, I am in compliance. I did take down the chicken wire, um, and the T posts are taken down as well. And I did get a permit as well. So I have done my due diligence to make sure that I am complying with the city and to know that I really, really want to work with everyone. I just. If the reason for a chicken wire and T post um, is for the aesthetic purposes of the city, which is one definition that I did come across, um, my garden is really, really beautiful, and I wish, like, I've been documenting it, like, my time here in Kansas. I know, don't, don't get emotional, just stick to the facts, I get it. But I have, I have gates up. So I know that in the Allen County Code, there is a way for an exemption for um, seasonal for gardens. Um, there's a waiver and an exemption. And when my, my yard was scoped to have the exemption, there I didn't, I didn't get it because the gate was left open, which showed my carelessness, is what I was told. And so I don't know if a gate showing my carelessness is necessarily the language of law or just a, opinion. an opinion. So I really am just kind of here to seeking clarity, but I also came with goods of three amendments to define gardens, to also define our non-compliance and to include the authority being the code enforcer, and, um, but to also take out any type of grandfathering um, that those, if our town is about, um, I wrote it down, but 
like the purpose and intent of the city ordinance is to promote the health, safety, morals, comfort, and general welfare, welfare of its citizens. One, I don't see how my garden or my chicken wire hurts anything. Um, two, there's a lot of chicken wire and T posts and a lot of um, two different types of wire on T posts and things like that. So I'm just kind of looking. I'm just looking for <laughs> help. One, one thing I would also um, state is that where the T-posts and Chico wire are, they do not completely uh, border the backyard property. Our garden is a large portion of the backyard, but it doesn't, it's not used as a mean to a certain property line. It's specifically just in case of the outside to protect the garden. So can I paraphrase that into a much more condensed? So there's there's a couple questions. One is about grandfathering, whether that is by statute or by the enforcer. And then another question about, you know, what do you think about these ideas for amending the fence? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in regards to the, the grandfathering, I have no idea, so I'm going to ask staff. Where do those... Where does that lie? Like, is that just a tradition, or are there reasons for that? No, it's not a tradition. It's, it's, it's in the code. It's in our code. It's in state statute. Yeah, so anything built before or at the time uh, it was considered legal, it's always going to be legal. So okay. if, if the rule changes, then that, that fence can stay, or that fence or whatever it is, can stay Legal uh, can, can stay as is. That, okay. that, that's where the legal nonconforming comes from. Uh, grand, grandfather is a colloquial term. Uh, le legal nonconforming to the the actual. Okay, so it was legal when it was built, and then the rules change, but they don't have to change, and it stays right. legal. But anyone new has to, you know, comply right. with the new rule. Okay. How, how do we honestly monitor that so that somebody's not slipping it in and it just. Catch and well, hit and miss. And Greg, well, I mean, Greg started nine years ago, so the assumption is the day he started and the fence was up, it was legal at the time. Um, if there's gardens that are active and they're taking such fencing up and down every year, that would no longer fall under the grandfather, right? Yeah, if it comes down, yeah. Because we allow all kinds of fencing that's prohibited down at the community garden and they take it down so they can run their tractor plow through there so i see the purpose of it what i think she's leaning towards is there a way we can be amicable to a agriculture fencing when it's strictly used for that i think in talking greg in the past some of the stuff i've received from him is the reason why we restrict some of our fencing is you don't want a pit bulldog in a fence with chicken wire or the welded two inch by four inch because it pops but if somebody truly has an identified garden is there a way we could come up with gardening agriculture fencing that's amicable to everyone as weird a risk question as that's going to be to jump on that my next question would be how do you define a garden because if i throw a chicken wire up around my yard and decide not to mow that certain area is that yeah. <laughs> For, it's, it's, it's simple the, you thought this through. Is the more you try to to uh to I'm define things the harder it's going to be to enforce well, so I guess living it, in a living yeah, in a. I, I believe people are going to take liberties with the phrase "garden." Uh, I think we can define that. I Edib edible goods is a garden, and when we live in an urban rural area that's got a lot of poverty, I think we need to think of the families that have to put gardens in to supplement their their living due to the cost of groceries. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, we need to be more more amicable to all social garden, lives. Steve, I think with a garden, Greg probably would have never said anything. Well, uh, I drove by that. It's a garden. It's got I, vegetables no, I, I in agree. it. I agree. I agree. But so look, I'm, I'm not sure the what distance. the problem was. It's if, the if it's over around the edge of the tilled area, I don't think it's a yeah. problem. It's a temporary garden, and Greg doesn't normally enforce that. This has quite a bit of green space inside that 
chicken wire fence is I think why he enforced it. it. It's a pretty good area, even though the garden takes up a pretty good area, there's probably 10 or 12 feet from the picture I saw in between the garden and where the chicken wire is at. And I think that's what drew the attention, not that it was a garden. So this is where defining clarity and language come in. This is so important because neither of those that say you can only have a chicken wire and T post yard around your garden if it is tilled, right? So the way that I define a garden is actually in, in, the, in the amendment that I wrote is that a garden is a planned space. It's usually outdoors. It's set aside for cultivation, display, and enjoyment of plants, vegetables, and other forms of nature. Can I touch on a couple of things? It's, it's, or, a, it's a round well, table. Well, this Nick is didn't discussion. finish. He had a second question. Did you still had, have your second question? Um, well, I think we're, we're in that now. So the first okay. question is about grandfathering, which I think we've answered. Okay. Right? Well, I'm going to touch on grandfather and, for a second. I personally have experienced it twice in the city limits of Iola. Most recently, I would say it was after Greg started working for the city of Iola. I, my husband and I wanted to place a storage shed in our backyard. I went and pulled my permit, and I was notified that I had to be, it had to build out a minimum of five feet from an existing structure where I wanted to put it, he would not grant me permission. So I went forward. I went into another business here within the city limits, and there is maybe 18 inches between the permanent structure and a storage shed. So I did go to Greg, and I asked him about it, and I was given the same information. It's... I... I don't know how we can change what's happened in the past, but try to move forward in a positive direction. Um, I'm not opposed to looking into having our attorney, who we employ, to come up with some drafts of a new ordinance for gardening or to be very specific on the wording. Um, but. I did not have an opportunity to drive by to see the yard. Um, I do understand that there was a large amount of green space between your raised beds and the chicken wire that was placed. I did speak to Greg on my way home from Tulsa this morning, and he did say that had the chicken wire just been up to enough space for you to have a walking path around your raised beds, he would not have raised any red flags. Um, so I, I do believe what Mayor is saying. We can come up with a middle ground. Um, and Myra, I agree. Language is very important to enforcement. The T-post, I struggle with the T-post because some of us California kids that are not very versed in agricultural language, I don't even really know what a T-post is. So um, it does need to be more specific and spelled out. But I do agree with Matt. We might be, I mean, some people could say grass is edible. So we have to come up with a... <laughs> I think you get into a very, very dangerous situation. That, that's a can of worms that... Giving people the option of having gardens because... I think you either look at it and go, we allow T-post fences or we don't allow T-post fences. Because whenever you start talking about what constitutes a garden and what doesn't constitute a garden, it's very subjective. And I think what we end up with is a lot of people who go, I'm going to put a garden, uh, I'm going to put a fence around my backyard and now it is a garden. Yeah, I, I and, agree and with And there's no Kinder. way of defining a garden that wouldn't be open to interpretation of allowing somebody to fence their backyard and go, it's now my garden. But with that being said, I don't have a problem with fencing off with chicken wire and T-post a 12-inch walk path around the garden area so that it gives them ample room to harvest, to plant, to harvest, to maintain. But anything more than that, I think that is a little excessive. I, I want to, I know I'm, <clears throat> I'm not going to be popular, but in my training by the league, I want, I want to be cautious of the grandfather word. No ordinance 
okay. is ever grandfathered unless it specifically states it is grandfathered. However, a past ordinance that said you could build your house two feet from the street at that time Pre was the condition. current ordinance. You can't come in 40 years from now and say you could only build a house four feet from the street and make that person move it because at the time they were in conformance. So if there are fences that are different and they were legal at the time by the specific ordinance, it's not that you're grandfathering them. You are saying at the time that was the ordinance. I guess I want you all to understand that just this is maybe a fence today, but there's a reason that the codes change over time, and, and I'm just saying that saying grandfathered is not correct because you are not, the only time you are grandfathered is if the new ordinance specifically says, for instance, Block H is allowed to do this because they have done it and they're only allowed until, Block H is allowed to have cows because they currently have cows and we're only gonna allow it until those cows die or leave. I'm just, I'm just throwing that one out there. but. You can't say it's grandfather. It was the rule at the time. So that's, that's, I, want, I just want everyone to, to understand. It's, not, the it's, word, it's the same reason why they were able to have cattle north of the college yes. until recently when it sold, and right. I couldn't have a cow. Right, I don't want a cow next to me. Next, well, yeah. And I, you know, is a very bad term. Just, yeah. just be concerned. <laughs> There's a reason that the council said no agricultural yeah. fencing at the time they passed the ordinance. Right. But if there's ever a change to an ordinance that says yes to agricultural fencing, if, mm -hmm. then it would be allowed. Now you can amend the ordinance however you want right. to. Sure, but you can't say, I, I caution the word grandfathered because right. a lot of people assume it. that's what's happening here and it's not. It's what the law was at the time. Right. It um, states that you can't build a fence currently at the time they can right. build the fence. Right. If I may ask a question to kind of talk about the point that Stephen said about um, enforcing, um, I would assume that if someone was to put up a chicken wire and T-post fence, they would have to pull a uh, building permit. Would that be correct? Or just a fence, fence permit. permit. A fence permit. So we should be able to go, uh, I would assume, prior to when Greg took office and see all fences that were constructed of chicken wire and T-post on file to make sure that they are in compliance, not necessarily someone taking advantage of that. Would that be correct very similar to how if a building is grandfathered then there's a legal you can of it. you can request and make a a request of records um, if there was indeed a fence permit pulled and if that fence permit is still on file can i also ask um wouldn't that be up to the job of like the city to have all of those and like why would we have to pull those it's just a record. Oh, okay. I said you would make a request. Oh, okay, for you guys to pull it. Yes. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you, as a requester, are paying for the time and the copies of that. That falls under core. An open records yeah. request. An open, yes. It'd be an open records request. Yeah. Yeah. Open records. That, that also makes the assumption that 10 years ago, a permit was required and right. it may not have been and that was part of some code update that happened and then right. from there on everyone had to do it so there right. may be nothing for a good reason because it, you didn't require a permit potentially for that back then who knows so the point of the I don't think it was on the date Greg was since 2016 but that's just when the code was updated so this probably it's probably been there since right. it's probably been there since the ordinances were codified in 96. I think was hired like Matt said he assumed yes. those all were legitimate he can't assume anything yeah. before his time. So I'm making an assumption here
I mean, if I if I can actually speak to that, Carl. Um, so uh, once this issue was brought up to our attention, we did go to Greg and we did file to build, um, uh, obtain a fence permit and had it approved by Greg in the exact uh, spot and positioning where the T post and chicken wire is. So building a fence in the exact position, beam by beam, inch for inch, exactly where the chicken wire and T post has already been approved. So I don't know if that would necessarily be an easement and, issue and since the building permit has already been approved. And I did drive by their property after we received this and they have yard outside of the fence to the south and I'm trying to think. Your, the front of your house is east. There's there's property to the east or to the south and north, and between the back and alley. It 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 is not like a perimeter fence like you would put in a person's backyard. And it, it more and what I could envision, what I saw, and what I tried to envision that was down there when I drove down there. It looked like to me it was close to the south boundary, went to the alley for fairly close. And then went back to like the garage is what I, what I looked at on the on the picture that I saw. Yeah. You know that's hard to hard to get your depth perception exactly right. But I mean it, it did not abut the house. There was no. it, it, there well, was space yeah. between the house. Yeah. And the uh, east side. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of space between the house yeah. and where the garden is, and there's five feet on uh, between where our property line is and where the chicken wire uh, and t-post fence was now my garden i think sometimes we can base this on perception on what does somebody qualify as a garden how's our garden small our gardens big i have always when i was living in california i had a 30-foot garden and I filled up the entire space and it was, I'm gonna say it was beautiful, but I used everything in it. And in this one, I do have flowers that are, on, that are near the uh, garage. There have been additional beds that There's been additional beds that I put in there. I have composting, I have tomatoes and loofah and everything that goes up there. So I am utilizing the entire space of my yard as a garden. I just landscaped it in a way to where it's also really nice to look at because I love spending time in there as well. So we are, the, our whole goal was that we were always going to build a fence Wood is very expensive right now. So the chicken wire and the T-post, that was the best option. Again, I'll take responsibility and say, well, you should have gotten a permit in the first place, and then I would have told you that you can't have chicken wire and T-post. But because I've seen it, and I didn't know that like, that the definition of nonconformities and the authority leads you to the Kansas statutes, there's just a lot of non-defining um, language in there. And so I have actually written three amendments, one for the non-compliance, which means it amends the ordinance, and I have it all written here. I also have it for defining garden, defining T-posts, and these are all put into that section that I did receive the violation for. So I just kind of want to ask around, is it okay if chicken wire and T-posts are in the yard if it is for a season? If it is through like April or May through October, that, that was our whole purpose. Yeah, that was our whole purpose. Permanent. It was just to get us through the winter season, and then, well, if you've been to our coffee shop, you know where people kind of like us. We stay very busy. We're very, very blessed, and we were going to build that um, wood fence during during the winter season. Yeah, and it's because uh, Greg had called me and said, as long as as long as we can get this, uh, as long as you guys take it down by the end of the season, I think we should be okay. Which reading that fa does fall into the Allen County um, of where I was redirected to, of like that there are waivers and there are exemptions. Yeah. So I would also state that when this matter was first brought up, uh, we did contact Greg, and Greg contacted us, and we were able to work out to where he would give us four to six months during during the harvest season to take care of it and then the citation came out of nowhere. Can, can I add something? Hey guys. Um, so <laughs> what's your name? Employee ever. I I work at the coffee shop. So while Nathan Cunningham. <laughs> and so while Gabe and Myra were gone at a conference, I was dog sitting. And um, Gabe gave me specific instructions to pick some of the tomatoes for the coffee shop. I'm not a huge fan of insects, 
Um, I will say that. But when I was picking tomatoes, I noticed there were actually bite marks in the tomatoes. And there was a bug that crawled out of the bitten tomato. And I wasn't too you pleased. You those in our coffee shop, just to let you know. <laughs> I mean, I could. I, I could, but I don't think you want that. And so something was eating it. I don't know what that may be. Probably a rabbit. But that's what the point of the fence is about. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the thing is because we have so many rabbits. So the point of it is like now, as Nathan's telling me this, I haven't had a chance to let my garden. We just got back into town around 4 p.m. I if I if I've put in all of this effort and all of this work. And all I'm asking is just to have this chicken wire fence, just to get a waiver or an exemption, just to have some defining language or clarity so that I don't have the rabbits that have now eaten my tomatoes that I love to be able to serve in my coffee shop. And all of our other, like our, um, our peppers and our herbs, I just lost my right to protect my property and my and my garden, which it clearly states in the Iona Ordinance that we have the right to protect, that fences are used for security. And that goes, I think, with wildlife too. I'm gonna to touch on that real quick. You do have that right, and Greg was willing to compromise on that. I'm looking at a picture that was emailed to me, and you have a lot of, a lot of green space. You have enough green space to have patio furniture or outdoor furniture within It's going to be a greenhouse. Okay, but it's fenced. So a compromise, I feel, would be to just bring your your fencing in to the tilled area or within, like I said, a 12, 18, 24 inch perimeter and it would still protect your, it would protect your produce. Okay, so am I getting permission then from you guys? No, that's, 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 no, no. Oh, no. Then my, my next my question, question is, no. then what's well, the point? Well, no. no so, we haven't gotten to that point yet, yeah. Myra. We're, we're trying to compromise, try to come yeah. up with some compromise. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to speak and, on what, what you're saying. And, and if, if we were to do that, pull it back. Then when we build the greenhouse, we have to build the greenhouse on the opposite side of the chicken that wire. Is, where that it would. is something that you need to talk to code enforcement about, pull, pull in your permits. No, no, we want to talk to Greg right. about that. He, yeah, he was that, fine to have it placed in that, on the inside. That, that would be, you know, you said you pulled a permit to build a fence. A, a fence. Yes. You know, that that's a code enforcement office question, not Councilwoman Joel. Um, but I'm just trying to come up with some compromises so that you can protect your property, your produce, but not having, not being in non, not being in non-compliance by fencing in your. Uh, I'd say 80 to 75 percent, 75 to 80 percent of your yard, and that's not all at this point being utilized as a, a vegetable garden. So, I mean, that's just my thoughts. Also, why we need to clarify gardening because now, now am I being in the gardening reference because it's only a vegetable garden? We're, we're what do we constitute to, a garden? These are these are things that cannot be decided tonight. We have to. Of course, I know that. We have, we have an attorney that we employ for these such. Correct me if I'm wrong. We need counsel to it, it, go. That. If, well, first of all, if you guys it, want to make any changes to the plan or to the zoning document you need to send it back to the planning commission but i'll tell you right now staff isn't going to be amenable to do uh, doing a lot of the things that have been suggested right now it seems like the practice has been to allow these kind of fences directly around the garden and this is not directly around the garden how do you define so, a garden but i think we can find a common area if the if the fences get moved in closer to the the, the boxes or the area that I saw, I think we can find a common ground. I don't think we need to be doing a whole lot of changing to the verbiage of the of the zoning regs and have a lot more meetings. When I think we can do this with uh, with a meeting between Greg and the Gleasons. So I, I, I think we can push the the fence that's on the south. I think you can push it north, and the fence that goes to the west, we can push it east. I, I think we can find a, a common area, but we're we're not. It's one of those, if we give an inch, we're not going to give a yard. Yeah. 
we I think but I think we can find a common area and we can end the discussion now I, I was, sorry, was a building I, permit granted for a wooden for fence if they yes. want to build in the exact it sounds like eventually this is going to come down with a wood fence and just let you all know uh, planks finish side out and if you guys put yeah, that yes. around and you you do that I'm assuming this this uh, chicken wire fence would come down it again I think we can find some common ground on this I we, we don't need to have more meetings I don't need to have public hearings we don't need to be changing the zoning regs because of this Let, let's just have Greg sit down with them I'm happy to meet too but what if it helps like a future, uh, this is hypothetical, what if it helps a, a future person that's moving here and they are also in the same position that I'm in and they're asking for clarifying language. Now, I know everybody has their lawyers on things, but I would like the ability to be able to print these out or to be able to email them so you guys can see in a legislative way the written amendments that I had come up with and then do with them what you want. Okay, well, nothing's stopping you from doing that. I mean, send them to any one of us. Sure, that, that's okay. That's awesome. Yeah. What's what? Who should I send it to? Like all of the council members' emails are on the city website. Okay, perfect. Find our email addresses there. Okay, so as of right now, my garden's getting chewed up. Um, I would like to build. I would. If anyway, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here, here's here's what I hear Matt saying tonight. Give Matt a call tomorrow when you, Matt, and Greg can meet. And he feels that we can get your garden protected this year by meeting amongst you guys. Because if you want an amendment to cover you putting up a fence tomorrow, we can't give you that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's going to be, we have to notify and have hearings and lawyers look at it. So your answer today is, is to call Matt, get a meeting date, that you can meet with him and Greg and come up with an agreement of where to move the fence in and then we can get that much done. And then you send us that document, those documents. It's, I mean, we can look at those, we can consider it. Um, that's probably our best bet to get it moving at this point. But a little food for thought, just looking into the future, you mentioned a greenhouse. You definitely want to speak to Greg yeah, about right. all of that. Yeah, because yeah. I don't, yeah. don't want to see us back around this table again in six months because we've missed a step. No, I would never build a, a, a big structure without seeking one. I know that you need code for. <laughs> well, so. I just I just wanted clarification on that because I don't want I don't want you guys upset with us over all of that, and I don't want us to have to revisit that again. So. And I, I just want to say one last thing, thank you. And I don't want you guys to think that I don't want our passion to come off as disrespect. Um, we are very much invested in this community, and we don't ever want to make an enemy out of anybody. We're just very passionate about protecting the fruits that we plant in the ground and the very little time that we have to protect those fruits. Appreciate that. I will yeah. jump in real quick. I know, because I am in charge of municipal court. The citation's been issued. You have to appear. That cannot be the only person who can stop that, or not stop it, but throw that out is the judge that cannot be stopped it's, it's been it's been taken down yeah I understand yeah. but you were issued a citation because you didn't do it on time ooh, ooh, ooh. No, no, we talked to Greg no Greg Greg called us he said hey if you can just get it down by this weekend he's okay, like so we okay but you kept saying you got a citation yeah June 30th yeah you got a letter or a you got a letter or you got a citation I, I got a, I got a letter that I was uh, and I was in violation okay. and it was an incident okay. sorry there's a, there's there's a difference. A difference. You, you, yeah right language is important right yeah you, you did not get a notice to appear in court no no no, okay. no. I was saying that okay, okay. yeah language okay. is important <laughs> that would be the yeah. language uh, no, we're we've taken for. down the chicken wire fence we've taken out the so you're now in compliance we're in compliance his violation letter yes but okay. can, I, can I ask one question? With, with T posts, can T posts be around a small area? For that's structure support? That's, that's a, with your meeting with Greg. That's your meeting with Greg. That's. I, I know. We it's just not. It's just not defined. Today. Okay. I and I'll send in those amendments too to be able to show you what what I'm thinking of and and I have every single ordinance and where maybe the not where maybe but where the def definitions are not defined and the language isn't clear. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you guys. Council and administrator reports. Nick. Ah. Carl. 
the other Nick. Hi, I'm Nick. Um, I uh, just want to say um, that the, there was a fire at Rookies and uh, to commend the fire department for their very timely um, response to that. They were there very quickly and uh, we did not lose a whole city block to fire. Um, so that was one thing I would like to point out. And so we don't have a giant hole like where the Funston house sits now where a restaurant fire did take out half a city block. Especially when it was a grease fire, that could have been really bad. Yeah, I, and, and yeah. the um, the other thing, I, two things I pointed about that one, it's, it, I think it's- um, Hey Donna, the guys. Hey Donna, can you keep Donna. it down over there, Donna? All right, we're not done yet. All right, pipe down. <laughs> Let, All right. A little quieter, please. Them. Okay, so uh, the, the other part about that was, um, it, having a, a, a full-time fire department made that happen where they could, you know, they were there, they could respond faster than a volunteer fire department. Probably could have. I'm not a fire professional, but I would assume that having a professional, you know, fire department who's there could respond faster than a volunteer fire department. And so having that is important. Um, and I also want to, um, my heart goes out to the rookie staff who, who lost their business. Um, and I really hope they were built. I, I like having, you know, that restaurant there. Um, <laughs> I miss them already. Um, and then um, uh, and I want to commend their staff. Um, I stopped by afterwards and talked to some folks who got out and they said they went from nobody knew what was going on and people were saying we just had to get out because there was a fire to there was black rolling smoke coming out of everywhere. And so the, the staff's uh, quick actions really you know, probably saved people's lives. So um, that was good. And that's all I have. School is starting this next week. Please watch out for the little ones. They're, I think they have open house on Tuesday at the elementary school, and later in the week will be the high school goes back Thursday. School starts Thursday. It's it's coming on, so please watch out for the little ones. That's all I got. Thank you. Boy, how do I have a list? No, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, school is starting, and as much as I complain about. Um, how quick summer went and that my students are back. Um, I just wanted to give a note to Iolans about, you know, what we are going to see. Um, we have students from 34 different counties within the state of Kansas coming here this Saturday, moving in. They're going to be living here for about 10 months. Um, for the next 10 months. Um, also, 17 states plus uh, Puerto Rico and then uh, 31 other countries and so these students mostly from 18 to 20 to 21 um, they bring a lot with them they bring a lot of lived experiences and um, hopefully Iolans and Allen Countyans I think that's the right word um, you guys will open open your hearts to them um, I will be talking to them about you know interactions in the community um, during the very first day but um, welcome them, please, because they do impact us as a community. Um, and they, they just add so much to us um, that's beneficial. Other than that, a lot of longevity being celebrated over the last um, two weeks or three weeks, um, especially Mr. Baker, who was just here 40 years. That's, that's a long time. He was, he was working before I was born. I will say that. That is a long time. My sister just yeah, turned 40 this year, so just as long. <laughs> I'll tell him tomorrow on staff meeting yeah. he said that. And I'm sure Carla will tell me at work. <laughs> but I, I appreciate dedication that, that we see time. in all of those. Um, even 11 years, that's a, that's a long time to anybody to be, be with the company. And so really appreciate all of them. I think that's the end of my long list. He's probably replacing utility poles that he was in on... I'm not going to make no. that comment. That's on you. <laughs> Thanks. Joel? Nothing tonight. Nothing? Nothing tonight. Okay. Corey, you have anything else for us? Uh, no, we'll have the... Uh, I do have a meeting with KDM tomorrow on the hopefully reclaiming some of the costs that we incurred during the uh, July 14. Storm. Uh, just on the cleanup portion, we'll have another one eventually on the electric infrastructure, but uh, another step in hopefully getting reimbursed for some of those costs. Now, I've noticed some trees with limbs still hanging down on service lines going to houses. Will that, whose responsibility is that? 
Technically, it property would owner. be the property owner. Property owner. If they're on those lines and it is a detriment, our guys will typically come clear them. And okay. At least lay them down in the yard. Sometimes they're not electric lines. Sometimes right. they're Cox lines or internet yeah. lines. Usually our guys will look at them and right. see. Right. Yeah, I just noticed a few hanging over some electric service lines. So. Matt, anything That'll for us? Roxanne? All right. Can we get a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. You can't oppose. You made the motion. <laughs> he can't oppose. He can't oppose if he makes the